industry's position, as you are aware, is that the, uh, the evidence, the scientific evidence that's being produced is not uh, conclusive in relation to a causal connection between smoking and human health. Tobacco companies tell lies. Are you saying that that link, as such, has not yet been established? Well, that's what the scientific facts say. Your now, interpretation of the scientific No, facts. that's what the scientific facts say, Christopher. Well, they'd need to claim that, because if ever they admit that fact, lawsuits will tumble down on them to the extent that forces them out of business of their own accord. absurd for a doctor to simply uh, adopt the attitude of blaming the victim, that is the person who has become addicted to smoking. The real culprits are the people who induce the people to smoke in the first place. That's where we should direct our energies and attention. We feel that the only way to uh, counteract the effect of advertising is to take direct action. You know, the British Medical Association and our own medical associations have tried all other kinds of approaches and we feel they're ineffective. <laughs> we're breaching the law, but we're not breaching medical ethics. In fact, I believe it's a medical responsibility to take this kind of action. makes me angry. What makes you angry? Well, the fact that, that they're, they're advertising something which really is not good for you um, and making such an incredible amount of money out of it. And I believe that it's very difficult for any anti-smoking campaign to get going because of the um, oh, pressure from the tobacco companies. And the tobacco companies in this country, as no doubt they have done in yours uh, for many years, have made profits out of the ill health of other people and it's about time that someone took them on. I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. Those of you who are involved in the healing professions will have seen firsthand the misery of cigarette-related disease. And like me, you probably found yourself becoming hardened to the reality. One particular case sticks in my mind and I guess is what led me here. I was doing cardiac surgery at North Shore at the time. A 53-year-old businessman came in after a massive coronary. Unfortunately, because of the extent of his disease, he didn't do well. And despite the best efforts of intensive care, he died in the small hours of the next morning. I went outside to tell his widow and his two teenage daughters. She looked me in the face and asked me why this had happened. Trying to be as kind as I could, I said, it's just one of those things that happen. And then I thought for a moment about what I'd said. I was forced to admit that I was just another apologist for the tobacco industry. He died because he had smoked. And by not admitting it, I was part of the conspiracy of silence upon which the tobacco industry relies. And I said, this has got to stop if I have to stop it myself. The tobacco companies have been sent invitations to this meeting. I wonder if any of them have come and would like to identify themselves and perhaps speak to the meeting. Can you tell us why you're filming from behind a curtain? Uh, habit. Pardon? Habit. Habit. Can you tell us who is actually commissioning oh, your know. filming? You don't I know. I do a lot of stuff for a friend of mine. Are you... Can you say with assurance that uh, you're not here representing the tobacco industry? Yes. You can? Yes, I certainly. There are a lot of doctors here today. Does this mean the medical profession is really standing up and being counted on the issue? Well, the ones who are here certainly are. I think uh, there's an immense amount of sympathy for us in the medical profession. 
I think that they recognise uh, what we are doing is, is right, although a lot of them are, um, oh, I guess, reticent to do something like this. You're ready to jeopardise your career. Most of the people in Bugger Up have worked for years through the so-called correct channels, and uh, it's literally being a bang your head against the wall exercise. Conservative governments aren't interested in acting with any force against the tobacco industry because they are dependent in some sense on revenue being brought in. And I think that uh, ordinary citizens who can make a statement are uh, making it in, in ways like this. Oh, now I'm getting the hang of this really quickly. The first time and it works like a charm. Does anyone else like to, uh, we've almost filled up the whole board here. Anyone else want to try their hand? Oh, there's a bit more space. People have been streaming past here while this is going on. I've seen six police cars drive past. I think that uh, Bugger Up has now become a, a Robin Hood phenomenon in Australia. People recognise they're doing something very pro-social. The tobacco industry harp on endlessly about their so-called freedoms to be able to put this sort of message, these sort of lies in front of the public. The freedom that they understand is the freedom to do things, the freedom to corrupt the language by calling uh, carcinogenic products mild, by stinking cig uh, cigarette smoke fresh, the freedom to addict people to a cancer-producing product, the freedom to uh, just ride roughshod over the health of Australians, fill, put a burden, an economic burden on the uh, Australian healthcare system. I think the freedom I'd like to talk about is the freedom from uh, that sort of thing. Cancer country, where the flavour is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're members of the Jet Set. And we all smoke the same brand of cigarettes. We fly here. We fly there. Well, we have to. We're trying to find a doctor who can cure lung cancer. <laughs> like a sponge. A sponge designed to soak up air. But some people use it to soak up smoke. If the average smoker could collect and wring out what goes into his lungs over a year, he'd find this much cancer producing tar. It's enough to make you sick. Very sick. What prompted you to give up this time? Uh, uh, well, there was a dreadful ad on television with a sponge that a whole bunch of muck came out of, and I think that was probably the trigger. A very good measure of the success of the advertising is the response rate, the number of phone calls that you get when the, when the advertisement runs. And we're keeping a, a weekly tally of the number of phone calls. Before the campaign started, they were getting about 300 phone calls a week. When sponge went to air, that shot up to around 2,000, 2,500, and it was fairly consistent. And then after that, uh, the first week that the I've Had Enough commercial ran, the phone calls went to 12,000. They never told me when I started. I was signing up for life. It took me 15 years to realize 
Then it cut me like a knife. It smells. Given him so easy. Given up his tough. But all my friends have made it. Excuse me. I'm tired enough. Tired enough. I'm tired of being chained. It's time I pack it in. Tired enough. This time I'll see it through. This time. If you've had enough, we can help you quit. Call the quit line now on 11640 or call into the new quit centre, Sydney Hospital, Macquarie Street, at the top of Martin Place. Hello folks, welcome to the quit centre. I'm Dr. Chris Clark. Now the rapid smoking technique and program which you've uh, enlisted to enter is one of the ways that we have found to be very successful in helping people to get over uh, the smoking habit. Now, a few words as to what it involves. It almost explains itself. You're going to smoke very rapidly. I'll be turning on a tape recorder here, and every six seconds you'll hear a thumping noise. On the noise, I'd like you to inhale very deeply and exhale, and be ready to go again six seconds later. Can you imagine that? <laughs> now, we each have those watches, right? Each time you puff, press in firmly, and it'll count the number of puffs you make. I'll start it now. I'd like you to light up. Go ahead now. Oh. Is everybody lit up? Anybody not lit? OK, I'm starting it now. Once more. Again. Now remember, folks, this is designed to do two things, to make you aware of all of the poisons in cigarettes and also to set up a negative association. If you get sick and feel nauseous when you eat or smoke or drink anything, it makes it less attractive in the future. If you're all lit up now, I'll start the, uh, the, the device again. Ready? Here we go. That's it. Fine. First puff. And a deep inhale. That's good. Mm. And another. And another. If you feel the tremors, feel yourself shaking or sweating or getting nauseous, another. Let yourself Give fully experience those sensations. No. Continue. I've tried to give up smoking um, on numerous occasions and it, when you've got support, it's easy, but when you get out there in the real world, it's a lot more difficult. This year I went to all the international rugby union matches in, in Australia and um, you get to the ground and just inside the, uh, the gate are a couple of attractive girls handing out cigarettes. You know, you walk in and they, I mean, they harass you. You're sort of channeled into exit ways and the stairwells and stuff and this is where they're standing and it's you know would you like a cigarette
Smoking myself, but when I look at Tom and I don't just see the Marlborough sign, I see what's in it the person. Smoking, advertising smokes doesn't bring people to smoke. Teenagers have to be affected by it. Um, you know, young kids have, have to, uh, they're exposed to the charisma of smoking, um, they're exposed to the, the brand imagery. I mean, just sh the, simply getting one's brand name into a potential consumer's mind. Is, gives an advertiser an enormous advantage. Um, if somebody who is going to use a product when they turn 20 knows about that product from the, the moment that they can, uh, they can learn to communicate and has that brand name implanted, impregnated in their head, it's got to, uh, it's, it's got to have an effect. Are you all smokers? Yeah. 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 How old are you? Uh, 16. 16. 16. 16. How long have you all been smoking for? Three years. Yeah. Yeah. Four. Do you all think you could give up now if you wanted yeah. to? Yeah, yeah. Be pretty yeah. yeah. Alright. I've tried. Easy. But if you wanted to give up, do you think you could? Why is that? So man, just because I enjoy Shame. it now. Like when you go surfing, you have a smoke afterwards, you know? And when you have a cup of tea or something. Everyone yeah. smokes here, just about. All around school here. down the road, everyone smokes. It's just to be in with it, you know. If you don't smoke, you're just sort of a square, you know. You oh, smoke because you get a good feeling that you're all doing the same thing and you're, you're in with the crowd, you know, and you're all equal because that's what everybody does. Right. But if, you know, you, you're you're not you're sitting there not smoking, everybody's smoking. And you think, oh, I feel left out here and you can't, you sit back and you look and they're all speaking about some, you know, something rambling on some story. You're sitting here getting left out just because you're not smoking. Yeah. Cigarette ads try one of three different ways to get you to buy their brand. First of all, they might show you good-looking guys and girls smoking their brand. The message they want you to get goes like this. If you smoke this brand of cigarettes, well, then you must be pretty tough, like the guy on the Marlboro ad. Or if you're a girl and you want guys to think you're a spunky chick, well, then you better roll your own drum, because that's what spunky chicks do. These ads are really having us on, but it's pretty hard to see through them and to remember that a smoke's not going to suddenly make you tough or spunky. When we were elected, we developed a strategy that consisted of a number of aspects. The first was to cause the price of tobacco products to increase in a way that might prohibit or discourage people from smoking. Do you want one? Oh, uh, go on. Come yeah. on. Okay, then. Good. We then took part of that increased excise and funded a very comprehensive anti-smoking campaign that went into the schools and devoted itself mainly to young people. No thanks. Don, don't smoke. What's wrong with smoking? Just don't like it. What's the matter with chicken or something? No, I just don't like smoking. I've made the de decision not to smoke, so I'm not going to. What other ways were there that, a that Andrea may have improved the support she gave to Heidi? Yes. She doesn't want to smoke, so why don't you just leave her alone? Right. How many people think that that would be a good uh, way to go about it? Oh, it's down to nearly all of you. Was there anything else that uh, you have to be careful of when you are refusing people in a friendship group like that? Yes, Heidi? She could have said that she still wants to keep the friendship, but she didn't want to smoke along with them. Well, that's a very strong statement, wouldn't it be? Part of your refusal technique can be that. You can say those sorts of things. Look, I want to stay friends, but please don't offer me cigarettes. I don't want them. In Norway, between 1975 and 1982, according to figures 
most recently released, the decrease in smoking amongst boys was from 21% to 15%, and amongst girls, uh, and these are age groups of about 15, uh, was from 28 to 22%. And that decrease was accompanied by a ban on the advertising and promotion of tobacco products. The Norwegian evidence clearly supports this state government's proposition that the advertising and promotion of tobacco products should be banned. A message to parents about their children. Right now, 40,000 children in Western Australia under the age of 16 smoke regularly. By the end of the year, a further 10,000 kids will start smoking, unless we care enough to do something about it. We want to give kids a chance. Kids are easily impressed by glamorous cigarette advertising. And let's face it, tobacco companies wouldn't spend millions of dollars on advertising if it didn't sell more cigarettes. That advertising is just like a time bomb in our children's lives. People who care are supporting the government's stand against cigarette advertising now, before it's too late. Let's give our kids a chance. It was a good feeling to be able to use the money from the excise to pay for the attack upon the promotion of the product that provided the excise. And of course the tobacco companies squirmed and uh, the result was that when we embarked upon the third stage of the campaign, which was the legislation to ban the advertising and promotion of tobacco products, there was unleashed upon us a very fierce campaign in opposition to the government and specifically in opposition to uh, the legislation to ban the advertising and promotion. Listen, if you're a West Australian, I think there's something you should know about. Someone could be destroying our cricket. Someone could be giving our football the boot. And believe it or not, someone could be lengthening our doll queue. And someone's even trying to make this against the law. How? By a few of our politicians trying to ban all tobacco advertising in Western Australia. If this happens, it'll affect a lot of us, including non-smokers like me. We'll lose all the money tobacco companies give to sponsor our sports. A lot of us, whose jobs depend on tobacco promotion, will be out of work. Yeah, that'd mean I could lose my job. Even our freedom of choice will be against the law. And that's just the start of it. Don't be like him. Think. Is banning tobacco advertising best for the West? I think the tobacco companies have been very professional and very well financed in their efforts to stave off what I think is the inevitable attack upon their existence. Well, now, why would anybody be surprised when uh, your own interests are threatened and that, that bill proposed to completely ban the advertising and promotion of cigarettes? And our company, Amatol, has a lot of uh, people employed in Western Australia. We have quite a few operations in there, in addition to WD and HO Wills. Why would anybody surpri be surprised that we would uh, endeavour to see to it that, that those efforts fail? I think, too, that they've given support to people who have been prepared to support them in return in all sorts of ways by, at one extreme, I suppose, speaking fondly of those politicians who don't threaten their existence, and at the other extreme of helping to support them financially in their election campaigns. And for those reasons, I guess, many politicians are afraid to take on tobacco companies, and many other people have a vested interest in seeing that the companies aren't taken on. We've got no problems about discussing with government at any level. We're used to discussing uh, with, uh, with government any sorts of proposals they might come up with. It will be our determination to see to it that any unreasonable attempt to further restrict the commercial uh, activities of our company will be a total failure. As far as I'm concerned, tobacco companies are causing the death in this state of about 1,200 people each year in your country of many thousands of people and it's a quaint sort of society that looks fondly on public companies that propagate that sort of misery surely. <laughs>